So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K25 Next Gen. In today's video, we're back with our third episode of the Trading Every Player Rebuild series, and today it's the New York Knicks. If you are not familiar with the way these videos work, they are very, very self-explanatory. Basically, before year one kicks off, we have to trade away every single player that is currently on the Knicks roster. Of course, when we make these trades, we have no say. The eyes will be shut. We will scroll through the trade finder. And of course, the end goal is to win a championship. So I've been really enjoying these so far. It seems like you guys have been as well. This is only our third one of these that we've actually done, but I have had an absolute blast so far. And you guys know the drill. Let me know any other rebuild ideas down below in the comment section. Again, slowly but surely making our way through these, the Steph Curry era rebuilds, any other challenges you want to see, let me hear it all down below in the comment section. So excited for this one today. Obviously, the Knicks have a lot of talented players, so hopefully we are able to get some talent in return. Let's get into it. Now, as we always do, we're not actually going to spend a lot of time talking about this Knicks roster as it currently stands because we're not going to get to use any of these players today throughout the rebuild. Now, something I will just kind of let you know real quick, I've already gone over the roster just to make sure I kind of have everybody memorized. I mean, I had 80% of it anyways, but uh, as you can see, uh, Justice Winslow and Evan Fournier are currently on this team. Now, obviously, Fournier is a former New York Knicks. He is currently playing overseas. Justice Winslow is not even in the NBA at all, to my knowledge right now, but neither of them are with the New York Knicks. The reason they are on this roster is because the Knicks actually started out the NBA season with only 12 players, and 2K doesn't allow that, so they automatically put two free agents on the team. Happens to be Winslow and Fournier, so I will trade them just because they are on the team right now, but they're obviously not going to really get me anything uh, of significant value. So talking about significant value is Jalen Brunson, who was an MVP candidate last year, all NBA second team, and it is certainly going to be a very, very important player for somebody. Unfortunately, it's not going to be me. So we do have 25 offers. I am assuming that some of them are going to be very, very bad, and I am just going to close my eyes and hope and pray that it is not a dog shit offer because it would be a really bad start. So we'll stop right about now, and it's going, oh my God. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I understand a lot of New York fans probably want Hartenstein back. I think he was a very important piece of them. And Cason Wallace is a nice, young, up-and-coming guard. Unfortunately for Jalen Brunson, this is absolutely disgusting. But I guess that makes it a little bit more challenging, if you will. Now, Carl Anthony Towns was obviously one of the big off-season additions for this team. Has had an interesting start to his tenure in New York. I feel like he needs to be a little bit more aggressive. But that's neither here nor there because he is going to be traded to the Washington Wizards. Him and Tyler Kulak are going over there for Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole. Awesome. All right, Mikael Bridges is going to be next up on the list. We'll go through pretty much all of the main kind of big names, and then we'll start doubling up and do two guys at a time. But for the, you know, the big guys that are 80-plus overalls, we'll do them individually. So we're going to stop for Mikael Bridges right about now, and we're actually going to go one to the left. And that is going to be Marcus Smart and GG Jackson for Bridges and Fournier, or it would have been Clint Capella. Honestly, I'll take this deal here for the Memphis Grizzlies. Thank you very much. OG Ananobi, who's going to be up next, 84 overall, 27 years of age, of course, got a big fat contract extension from New York this offseason, and now he is going to be a member of the Orlando Magic because we are trading Ananobi and Cameron Payne for Anthony Black and Jonathan Isaac. Well, welcome to the team. Now, again, not my favorite deal, but it makes it just a little bit more challenging. We went from being led by a 93 overall Brunson to an 83 overall Kuzma. It's just love these rebuilds, man. Um, all right, actually going to move. This is a little cheesy, I know. I'm going to move Josh Hart to the small forward spot, only doing that because his overall jumps up two, and uh, maybe we can get a little bit of a better player. I don't really know if it's going to work or not, and again, not like I have any say anyways. So, 26 offers here for Josh Hart. We will scroll through all of them. Stop right about now, and instead of one to the left, let's go one to the right. And that is going to be Jakob Pertl, or it would have been Jay... Oh, I would have taken Jalen Duran. Oh, I'm such a fucking dunce. All right, welcome to the team, Jakob Pertl. Excited to have you here. Uh, Mitchell Robinson is going to be the final guy we kind of trade individually. Actually, I'll throw him up with Deuce McBride just because Deuce McBride's not making a lot of money, which the way he's played so far this season feels like an insane steal of a contract that the New York, New York Knicks got, but good for you. And stop. Brandon Clark, Vince Williams Jr., another deal here with the Memphis Grizzlies. It is the New York Grizzlies now here with this team. And uh, yeah, this team is... Uh, Interesting. All right, Precious Achua, we will do him, and I am going to trade Justice Winslow just because, again, he was kind of on the roster uh, to start this thing out. So 18 offers for these two. I think this should be one of our final deals, if not the final one. It is going to be with the Indiana Pacers. Isaiah Jackson, first-round pick. Welcome to New York. Excited to have you here. And then I think, let me just go through slowly but surely. 
Make sure we've cleared out almost everybody here. Jericho Sims and Dottier might be the final two. Also, I don't trade the two-way players, if you were wondering. So, yep, just going to be these two. 14 different trade offers. Of course, both these guys relatively young. And uh, hopefully we get somebody relatively young in return. Our final deal going to be with the... Oklahoma City Thunder. That's actually a potentially valuable draft pick. So I can 1,000% kind of live with that. So uh, we're not allowed to make any other trades, of course, after the deals we have already made. So let me just go through this position by position. Uh, it feels weird, you know, seeing Hartenstein, you know, back in a New York Knicks jersey. Of course, a year ago, he would not have been able to do that here in this rebuild. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of like nice role players with this team. There's not really any sort of superstar like we once had with Jalen Brunson, any sort of star talent like I guess you had with Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, but we got a lot of decent enough pieces here that I think are probably not going to be great this year. And something else to note in these trading every player rebuilds, just because we're trading away our whole team does not mean that we turn off previously traded draft picks. So every single draft pick that the New York Knicks have kind of mortgaged for Mikal Bridges, OG Ananobi, Carl Anthony Towns, all those picks, I still don't have them. So I can't make any other deals right now. Let's go ahead and move some positions around, set that rotation. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not really sure how I feel about this team heading into year one. Now, I don't want to sit here and say that we're complete trash because I don't know if that's on. Well, maybe we are. I mean, we're, we're basically the Wizards with a little bit of an upgrade at the center spot and maybe a little bit more depth. I mean, that's kind of the nicest way that I can describe this team right now. Oh boy, this is going to be a long video and a long season. So let's just get into it. Marcus Smart, Jordan Poole, Vince Williams Jr., Kyle Kuzma, Isaiah Hartenstein is your one through five. Ben Gino will be led by Gigi Jackson, Jakob Pertl, Anthony Black, Case, and Wallace, and then Jonathan Isaac rounding out the 10 man rotation. So unfortunately, guys like Brandon Clark, guy like Isaiah Jackson, who probably both deserve to get minutes on an NBA team, uh, just unfortunately will not. We have too much depth. And of course, the rule that we have implemented is I cannot trade them away or make any other upgrades, in, at least in year one. So. This is what we're working with. Kyle Kuzma going to have to lead this team to the promised land. And uh, yeah, I'm hurt. I'm in pain. And I have a feeling it is not going to be a very good season. But I will see you guys at the end of it. That is for sure. We had a feeling that year one in New York may not be so great. And that feeling, unfortunately, came true. Now, we finish up year one with a record of 37 and 45. And while it's still... Certainly could have been worse, I guess, in hindsight. It is uh, nothing to be happy about or proud about, and we certainly have our work cut out for us. Now, Luka Doncic, that is for his first career MVP. Reza Shea, Thompson, Wembenyama, if you guys have watched enough of these videos, they're identical in year one pretty much every single time around. So we ended up not making... Well, <laughs> oh, good God. Again, I just I do not like the fact that... Uh, teams that are under 500 even have a chance of making the playoffs but maybe that's a hot take maybe maybe teams you know maybe people think well if you're you know facing a team that won 37 games in round one you should be able to beat them easily i do i get it i just don't think they should be rewarded i'm going on a spiral right now here are the numbers across the team for the season hartenstein let us in boards this is going to be my goat mr marcus smart so uh there's a possibility we do make the playoffs we have a chance i guess if you will the Cavs. we've had a fantastic start to their season in real life we lose we're out we're out Okay, let's sim through the rest of the playoffs real quick, see what we're going to be working with here in terms of the finals. It is, well, maybe a possible matchup in real life. OKC okay, Thunder against the Boston Celtics. Thunder winning in seven. SGA, your finals MVP. Okay, Chris Paul on this. What? Really? Okay, let's get into it. We are going to have to decide what we want to do with pretty much the majority of this team. Now, uh, I don't want to be disrespectful, uh, you know, towards the, the current cast of characters that we are working with, but... Uh, there's not a lot to be super happy about, if I'm being honest with you. So uh, the Nets do have our pick at number 12. I will double check and I guess confirm that if there's no protections on it or anything, but I don't think there are. I'm happy with Debs and the job that he's you know done with this New York team so far. Uh, I'm not saying that if we put together a much better team next season and we still suck that he's going to keep his job. But as of now, he is fine because I'm controlling the rotations, of course. Uh, let me double check that we're not actually supposed to have that pick uh, and I'll see you guys whatever's next. I have confirmed that we are not supposed to have our first round pick this year. So number 12 overall is going straight to the Brooklyn Nets. And that's it. End of the story. Now we are going to make a deal. We have two second round picks. Both are decently high at number five and nine in round two. I obviously don't need both of these. So might as well move up to the end or well, I guess the start of round number two uh, in a deal here with the Minnesota Timberwolves. So I'm not saying we're going to draft a superstar there at pick number 31, but We'll maybe get somebody who's plug and playable. I've drafted Rocky Zakarski in the past, and uh, I'm going to do it again because I know he is definitely the highest overall remaining here. So, not bad. 73 overall. I can live with it. All right. Wallace and Black both going to be brought back. Uh, Jackson, I'll qualify. Of course, out of the rotation last year. So, we'll see what we end up doing with him. But he is worth a qualifying offer, at least uh, in my opinion. Now, we are going to go ahead and make some trades because I would be an absolute idiot to run this thing back. 
I like Hardenstein quite a bit. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them, but if we want to be a competitive team, we have to make upgrades pretty much all across the board, one through five. I'd love to start that out here in a deal with the Miami Heat and see if we can maybe pick up Bam out of bio. He'd be a clear-cut upgrade at the center spot, and again, in my opinion, I know I've mentioned this in the past, one of the more underrated players in all of basketball. So I knew it wasn't going to be easy. We're going to have to give up uh, something of value. It's probably just going to turn into another draft pick here, but I want to get Bam. We got Bam. Welcome to the team. Okay, we just made a big trade with the Sacramento Kings and picked up Mr. De'Aaron Fox. 89 overall, him and Bam are going to be the new duo, kind of leading the charge with this thing. And uh, I'm very excited about it because as, I guess, I don't even know if the word good would be in play, but as, I guess, decent as Jordan Poole is, moving on from him is not the worst thing in the world. So uh, just adding some star talent to this team is something we really need to do because if we don't, we are going to put ourselves uh, in basically a do or die position next offseason. Nobody wants that. For the second time in this video, we are going to trade for a former New York Knick. Now, I say former, I guess before this video started. So, technically, we were able to trade for him. Now, as much as I love Marcus Smart, I am always going to. One of my favorite players in the league. Uh, he's 31 years old. We are obviously getting a little bit younger here, acquiring Emmanuel quickly. Uh, and we're getting a little bit more offensive-oriented. So, uh, Marcus Smart's true impact isn't always felt here in 2K and Jakob Pertl. While a really solid backup center option, probably one of the better backup options you could actually have here, uh, is not really going to see the floor enough for his again impact to really be felt here with us so manual quickly jacoby walter welcome to the team excited to have both of you here we are slowly but surely very much improving this group and I think our final move of the offseason is going to be re-signing Isaiah Jackson to a three-year, roughly $34 million contract. Of course, we need a backup center after trading Zakarski, trading Pirtle, and uh, yeah, I think Isaiah Jackson will do just fine. So Derek Rose was actually here. I can Ariel Hakporti was also here. So uh, yeah, Jackson, welcome to the team, or welcome back to the team, I guess. Excited to see you uh, actually in the rotation now. So we are certainly an improved team from where we were just a season ago. Uh, we have definitely made some moves for this team to, I actually am going to play Jacoby Walter as well, uh, for this team to be back in the playoffs and hopefully an actually competitive product heading into year two. So I'll see you guys in the rotation. To nobody's surprise, that was a very busy offseason for us. Of course, we knew we could not basically just bring back the team we had last year because it was certainly not going to get any better. What did get better is our new talented group, 1 through 5, 6 through 10. I'm very excited about it. It's going to be De'Aaron Fox, Emmanuel Quickly as our backcourt. Now, maybe a little bit worried that the, the size of those two guys is a little bit... Too short, but you know what? It's 2K. It'll work. Gigi Jackson here at the 3. Got Kuzma at the 4. Did he go down two overalls, by the way? I guess he's 30, and you know 30 is basically 90 here in 2K. Uh, and then Bam Adebayo as my starting center. Now, the bench unit, very nice development for Mr. Anthony Black and Mr. Cason Wallace. Still got Jonathan Isaac. We obviously brought back Isaiah Jackson. And then Jacoby Walter uh, going to be our 10th and final guy. So, I'm excited. This is clearly a playoff team. Hopefully a serious contender as well. See you guys at the end of year two. Much better. Much, much better year two for us here in New York. It is 63-19 as the final regular season record. And hopefully... Back in the driver's seat, where I wanted to be since the start of this video. Now, Luca wins another MVP. Cooper Flag goes to the Wizards. RIP to Buddy's career. Amen Thompson, sixth man. Wemby, another deep boy. Alex Saar, most improved. Maybe I'm shitting on the Wizards too much. They just got a rookie of the year and a most improved player. Even though I think most improved player for number two overall pick is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. But neither here nor there. All right, let's dive into it a little bit. We were the one seed here by one game. Looks like Toronto was extremely talented as well. Uh, and we had the second best record in all of basketball. So let's take a look at some of the numbers real quick. Across the board, De'Aaron Fox, he was incredible. Kyle Kuzma's been really consistent uh, for us throughout this video. I mean, the scoring went down, but again, we added so many more scoring options with this group, so fine by me. Bam Adebayo, GG, Jackson, quickly, Black, Wallace, Isaac, Jackson, and then Walter. Rebounds for game is going to be Bam, and then assist is Mr. Fox. So, instead of being a playing team, we are going to be facing a playing team. That team's the Milwaukee Bucks, although Dame is going to regress a little bit. And outside of him and Giannis, there's not an incredibly talented surrounding core. Uh, I'm not really sure why they moved on from Chris Middleton. That was certainly a choice, but it's 2K. There's no injury, so let's see what's going to end up happening here in round one. Now, they definitely have the best player in the series. There's no doubt about that. I think we are the better team, though. Up 3-2, going to Game 7. We do win Game 7. Now, moving on to the Pistons here, who put together, you know, a nice team that has obviously been able to compete. So, I mean, they're young, but they're scrappy, and uh, I hope we can beat them. Let's see what happens. Up 1-0. They tie it up. Whoa, now. Hang on a damn minute. We go up 3-2. We go to game seven again. 
And this time, well, not this time. We also win this game seven. Now, us and the Indiana Pacers, uh, the Pacers are a well-oiled machine when functioning properly. So far to start the NBA season, they have not been functioning very properly, mostly because Tyrese Halliburton has played like, well, shit, for lack of a better term. But uh, they moved off of Miles Turner, who has been, I believe, their longest tenured player. I think he's drafted 2015, I believe. Okay, here goes nothing. Quickly split the first two at MSG. Lose game three on the road and game four. We do win game five and then get bounced in six. And it is Halley in the Pacers against Luka in the Mavs. Mavs win it all. Luka, 37-point triple-double. Okay, he's your finals MVP. Um, it was a good season. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that was a you know disgusting performance and we 100% should have been in the finals. I mean, we only won the East by one game. And at the end of the day, I would have loved to have been there. Fortunately, we're not. Lakers, Magic, Kings, Sixers, and Heat. Okay, now the decision on Thibs, I'm going to keep him, right? I mean, we went from, I don't want to say a basement dweller because we were in the plan after year one, but a really bad team to really good team with obviously a lot more talent. So I still think Thibs is a good head coach. I'm not going to fire him because he probably doesn't deserve it. Let's approach the draft. I know I've traded basically about every single pick I have. I still have 27 and 18. Can I get a future first? Thank you very much, Celtics, because that could be a trade asset at a minimum. And Wallace, Jackson, Black, and Walter all going to be brought back. And I think in terms of major moves, I don't really anticipate anything too crazy. Uh, wow, De'Aaron Fox wants a lot of money, but I obviously have to pay him. So um, there might be one or two moves. Okay. Wow. I cannot believe that went through. We just gave up pretty much every single future first round pick we had access to along with Jonathan Isaac and Jacoby Walter and landed ourselves Brandon Miller. Look, there's nothing wrong with Gigi Jackson. He is developing quite nicely. He is finding himself. He's been consistent throughout the entirety of this video. I just think we need a little bit of a higher overall at that small forward spot. So it's not like Miller's numbers are crazy out of this world better than what Jackson was giving us. But ultimately, that overall is going to shoot up and I'm, uh, I'm happy about it. So right now, I am going to find myself a new backup power forward. I think that's kind of going to be the final move that we end up making here. Um, honestly, Kenny L. Martin Jr. is only 25. JRE also sitting here. But I think a guy like Najee Marshall makes a lot of sense for this team. So let's bring him in. He is going to be my new backup power forward. And then I think I'm just going to let it go. Something we're also going to have to decide is that Anthony Black is almost 100% going to be a higher overall than Emmanuel Quickly by the start of year three. So we'll decide on that once we get there. But as of now, I am excited and I'll see you guys at the rotation. Final year four is here in New York. Last season, relatively speaking, was a success. Compared to year one, pretty much anything would have been a success. But last year, we really found an identity. We obviously brought in a lot of stars. This offseason, one major change, that being the addition of Brandon Miller. We also have inserted Anthony Black into the starting five. He's one overall higher than Emmanuel quickly. Also gives us a little bit more size in that backcourt. And if 2K suggests it, I'll do it because that typically leads to some more wins. So it is Fox, Black, Miller, Kuzma, Adebayo, one through five. Bench units also incredible with quickly taking over. As our sixth man, still got Case and Wallace, got Gigi Jackson, Isaiah Jackson, and then Najee Marshall rounding out the 10-man rotation. So is it good enough? I think it is, but we will find out together at the end of year number three. If this image ever came to real life, I don't think I would ever watch basketball again. Between the black magic that goes on in Miami with everything that Eric Spolstra and his staff do, and how good Luka Doncic is, if, you know, the Celtics fan over here had to watch this bullshit, never watching basketball again. Now let's get back to what we're actually doing here today. 71-11 and 11 is the final record here at the end of year three. It's obviously incredible, and we are very much hoping that we are, uh, you know, in the mix, at least, for a championship. Cameron Boozer, Philadelphia 76er, Rookie of the Year, Trey Mann, your sixth man. Wemby wins Depoy again, Ace Bailey most improved, Luka also wins Clutch Player of the Year, and Thibs is your Coach of the Year. So I think it is a safe bet that we had the best record. We won the East by 17 games, and the Timberwolves win the West. Okay, let's talk about some of the numbers real quick for this team. De'Aaron Fox still leading the charge. Brandon Miller was incredible. Looks like that age 24 season. Doing wonders for him. Kyle Kuzma, again, as much as I shit on Kuzma, he's been a beacon of consistency for us throughout this video. Bam Adebayo, Gigi Jackson, Emmanuel Quickly, Anthony Black, Kaysen Wallace, Isaiah Jackson, and then Najee Marshall. Rebounds were again led by Bam. Assist going to be Mr. Fox. So, who is it? It is us in the Brooklyn Nets. Young, well, experience at the center spot. But other than that, I... I just don't really move me too much. Okay, we went in five. Now, moving on to Cleveland. This was the team we faced in the play-in in year one. Of course, they did end up beating us. They have uh, made, I guess, I don't, not an upgrade. They just made a change at the center spot. I know they're both 85 overalls with Kessler and Allen, but I'm still taking Jared Allen 10 times out of 10. Nonetheless, here goes nothing in the East semis. We are quickly up 2-1, up 3-1. We close them out. And the Charlotte Hornets are going to be the thing standing between us and a finals appearance. Now, 
I took Brandon Miller from you, so unless LaMelo Ball is legitimately just the best player in the world, I am just going to confidently hit Sim and move on to the finals. Now, SGA in the Thunder is uh, not an easy matchup there. Is, uh, no doubt about... I forgot I traded them Jalen Brunson. I forgot I did that. Oh. How have they not won a championship every single season? Oh, man. I didn't even piece together when I traded Hardenstein that it would be, you know, next to fucking SGA. Wiggins is somehow here. Also got Jalen Williams, Chad Holmgren. There's no way we win this series. There is absolute... 2K? Is this game just being as nice as it's ever been to me today? Because the fact that we're up 3-0 right now and potentially going to sweep this team is absolutely mind-boggling. Okay. No. I'll see you in there. Look, you all know it. I know it. I'm not good at this game. Nobody's denying that. I have no idea how this gameplay is going to go considering the fucking God Squad. Fuck off. Now it's a six-point game because Mr. Topic over there wants to hit a three. Okay, well, if we're going to do this, we got to go quick. Of course, being up 3-0, really, is super helpful. Uh, that obviously is a very big benefit for us. But I still want to win because I've blown 3-0 leads before. Uh, probably more often than I should considering how often it actually happens in real life, which is, you know, never. So I am just hoping that I can kind of focus here today. And Brunson... I cannot play on ball defense against Brunson, but who am I going to play on ball defense against? Because every four out of the five players in this starting five would probably absolutely destroy my user defense because I'm legitimately that untalented at this game. Fox, green. Okay. Back to a three point game. Here in Fox has 37. He's fucking feeling it right now. All right. Casey Wallace is a good defensive guard. SGA has obviously a lot of sock. What am I supposed to do? I'm getting crossed out of my fucking shoes. I mean, I, there's just, there's nothing for me to do at this point. Except for Prey. So, um, yeah, we'll go off ball again. What am I doing? Fucking idiot. Toe pitch. Cookies, cookies, cookies. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Case and walls. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm running a pick and roll with Kyle Kuzma in the NBA Finals. He lays it in. It is a three-point game. Once again, one possession ball game. I have not made a stop so far, at least to my knowledge. So I'm going to chill over here on Andrew Wiggins and just kind of hope and pray that Case and Wallace can stay in front of SGA. Don't foul bait, you bitch. Okay, let's get the ball back. Let's try to maybe go quickly for a two. Nope. Nope, nope, no. Nope. Fox. Why am I fucking pulling that shit? Oh my god, that was so stupid. I thought he was so much closer to the three-point line than he actually was. Update, he was not. So, uh, yeah, we're just gonna... Oh, shit. Oh my god, he missed. Okay, give De'Aaron Fox the basketball. Because I cannot do anything without this. Call the ISO, get out of my way, and then can somebody give me a good screen, please? Bam, thank you. This side. Fox, Fox, Fox! How do you miss that? I thought I got a perfect fucking release off. All right, at least they're going to have to shoot. Brunson pulls the trigger, and he misses it. Okay, I do have a timeout. I'm not going to use it. The unfortunate reality of this team is that there's not like an elite, elite three-point shooter. I mean, there's some decent ones. Fox, tie the ball. Well, fucking, I can't hit a fucking three to save my fucking life. Oh, my God. Oh, I fucking hate this game. To nobody's surprise, I was not able to clutch up and come back and uh, complete the sweep. So back to MSG we go, and hopefully this time I just can relax and we can just win. And thank you very much. Okay, at least you got your gameplay. All right, De'Aaron Fox does win finals MVP. Pretty good numbers across the board from him, and I am uh, very happy that we got this one done. I mean, the starting team that we had, you know, after I traded away the entire Knicks roster to kick off this video was bad bad would be putting it nicely i mean there were a lot of decent role players with this team there was just no star and that's obviously something you need to win so uh, i'm happy that we ended up you know doing as well as we did i didn't think it was uh going to be possible but i'm very happy so let me know any other rebuild ideas down below in the comment section i am uh open to anything and everything that you guys want to see i am uh you know just kind of doing my thing until you guys say different so that's it for me as always thanks so much for watching i love you guys i'll catch you guys on the next one